we keep on saying to her. Oh, you might you win us. Put up and I'm famous. Ride it like some Vegas. Yeah, they'll come home with us. Oh, guys, welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. I'm your host, Buck. Today, we're going to have a special guest, my wife, B. Dot. Make sure you follow me. Oh, I got my mom. Wanna have one of those for seven dollars? Alright, what we got? You already start? Yeah, I can do the intro and all that stuff later. Oh. Like, that's why I was like Got your hat on and all this, like, you f forgot that I, I can cut all this stuff out. Yeah, it's recording, but I can cut all this stuff out and... So I was like, why are you being so weird about it? It's not live. Come up here, duck in the corner, put your hat on, yeah. like somebody looking for you. Ain't nobody looking for you. Like you. We only got 40 people following us well, on YouTube. 40 people, somebody might be looking for you. It's not that serious. Maybe. You worried about what other people think? Yeah. Why? I just don't. I still got a job and everything. That what does that have to do with anything? Because I don't want to be associated with certain things. They don't know where we live. Don't they don't know. Facts. Social media, like social media, can be people's downfall. Very Something true. Simple. Very true. Like people want to ask. I don't want to be one of these people. Go for it. Where my face is seen and invites me to ask. I know, so Marlon. Fine. Protect yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay. Yeah, you got a list of stuff, right? Black Ninja. Oh my gosh. So apparently, he gave me the task of looking up topics to talk about. Now, this is not something I wake up and do. Yo, you do. So. Because you get on Instagram every day, all day. You see media, news, all day, every day. Yes, I do. And then the stuff you pique interest in, you read and research, right? I read it. I don't right. Read right. It. So the stuff that you find interesting, you look further into, like, that's what you bring up to talk about. Because other people don't know. I don't research it. I'm not saying it. research, but I'm saying knowledgeable enough to talk about it. Okay. So, first thing that piqued my interest was that, well, this isn't something new. It's happened several times before in other places but it was a school in I want to say Florida I don't know it was basically it was the first day of school a little black boy came to school had dreadlocks they told him is this a white school mixed school it's a Christian Academy yeah. told him that he could not <coughs> start school that first day because his hair it needs to, he needs to go home and cut his hair so what bothered me was just watching the video and seeing the little boy's face. Because you know kids get excited first day of school. Right. Like, I'm going to meet my teacher, meet my friends, and to see his face. And to know me as a parent and then know me as wanting to be an, a teacher. And to see that little boy's face be as distraught as it looked was just kind of like, damn. He's here to just learn and y'all not, you're not going to let him come to school because of his hair. And you know, that's something that's come up time and time again about, especially with black children coming to school with their hair being curly or braided or dreaded and them being turned away because of their hair. Right. So the father made a big deal about it, decided to pull him out of school because the rule was the boy's hair had to be cut, couldn't come below their ears or something like that. So took him out of school, decided to put him in a new school. <coughs> And when they, he showed up the first day of school, well, of course he had his dreadlocks and he put his dreads into a mohawk because the other school said he could not have a mohawk nor could he have dreads. Right. So the dad was like, well, we're going to do both and you're going to go to school. And it seemed like everything went fine when he showed up. But to me, I felt like that was, that was a messed up situation to put a child in. Right. Um, but was that in their, was it like a school where they had to wear uniforms and stuff like that? Yeah. But... The, I mean, this so it was. The military, though. No, but what I'm saying is, is like, I mean, that's the. I get that's the school's policies, but I feel like there's things that should be lenient and there's things that should not. Now, if the school wears uniform and he's coming out of uniform, got it. If you're supposed to wear blue pants and he's showing up with red pants, 
where you're supposed to wear the school shirt or a white shirt, button down, you come in a white t-shirt, I can understand saying, hey, you need to go home, change and come back. But to completely deny a kid to come to school and learn because he has dreadlocks, I feel like schools need to adjust because you... I mean, yes, that's very true, but then at the same time, like... You gotta think about the military and how, even how females who were I think it's a I think it's a dumb rule that women can wear earrings and guys can't. Well, in uniform, but just like in the army, women can't wear uniform unless you're in your dress uniform. I think that's stupid. Right, you see? Women couldn't have dreadlocks and braids for the longest time. They just changed that. Yeah, rule. but as far as like the school thing, it's one of it just depending on the school. Like, I mean, I got that, but I'm just saying you don't. Everybody's not on the same same page. But there uh, could be a religious reason why he has dreadlocks. I mean, they, they don't know what that family's culture, what their their background is, what their belief system is, and you're going to turn that child away. But then they're saying, like, we don't accept it, but there's another school that he can go right. to. You know That's what I mean? Parent, there you him up. And I feel, like, I feel like the school was wrong in that aspect of me wanting, getting ready to start teaching. I feel like... I feel like the there should have been enough times for that kid to go to that school. Right. You know what I mean? Before the and first day of school. the father even tried to compromise. He, they said, kill I at least braid his braids up so that they're not hanging down so that he can come into school. And they still told him no. But now it's getting deeper. It's more like, how, how come the... Because isn't... I remember when, like, elementary school, at one point in time, you had to go to school and meet your teachers before like the first week of school like I mean, saw, yeah. saw your classroom you it's not mandatory. like you saw your classroom and you know what I mean orientation. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's not so but it's one of those things like if you go into a, a Christian Academy or whatever they should have orientation well, to the case, disclose have, all of this him in the first place that's what I'm saying so that's what I'm saying it should have been an opportunity or a time for orientation or well, parents PTA meeting at night, you know what I mean? But so, I feel like the school probably dropped the ball because that's something they should have put out and disclosed to the parent. Right. Like, hey, this is while you're enrolling. Let me give you this list of things that are no nos for the school. Right. So you know. That's what I'm saying. Like, how do they not? You know what I mean? Because, like, say for instance, yes, that's fucked up, right? But at the same time, a parent enrolling a child, you're gonna get all that stuff and yes. packets and. They probably didn't read that shit. I don't know. I, I just you understand what I'm saying? Telling you my view. Oh no, 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 I know, I know, I know. I mean, yes, I agree with you. That's <coughs> fucked up. But at the same time, the parent probably dropped the ball because they probably got that in one of them Packers or some shit. I don't know. Somebody dropped the what ball. What's the name of the school? Uh, I don't remember. I gotta go back and look. That's fine. We so anyways, we the other thing was so I'm from DC. I love my city. Um, there was an incident on Instagram where this white woman was on the bus. Apparently it was like the X2 bus in DC. She was on the bus, got into it with a group of black people. I don't know what was said, what the disagreement was, what the argument, but she got up off the bus and as she was getting off, she used the N-word. And where was this? DC. DC. Okay. So. Is that it right here? Cut to scene two. Yeah. So is it Miami? Okay. Cut to scene two. The next recording is her outside the bus on the ground with a bloody face. So I don't know what transpired between her getting off the bus and her ending up on the ground with a bloody face. However, my thought process is just like any other city, you don't go to a place that's not your own and decide to run your mouth. Not saying the people who hit her were right, but not saying they they were wrong. Right. She just you need to watch. I mean, mind. some she just got what she deserved. So karma sometimes is quicker for some people than it is others, and she karma got her ass real quick. And I just thought that was funny, especially just being from DC. Like, I mean, I'm always telling people who aren't from the area. Just like uh, Donald Donald Trump when that guy yelled the video he showed me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just don't go to other people's areas and disrespect them and think it's gonna be okay. So I mean that's why six nine is going through all this shit. So the other thing we talked about was those people in Connecticut, the ninety plus people who OD'd on synthetic uh, marijuana. Mm -hmm. And then this whole went up to ninety five. What should it take being that you Since you we looked smoke. it up last night? Yeah. So four people died since no, we talked about died. 
additional five people OD. I want to say it was like six people who were near. Oh, they that. just overdosed. They didn't die. Yeah. Uh. But what's your take on that? Did you smoke? Um. <clears throat> As far as the people overdosing, I think they're just looking for, I'll say, like a, a cheaper way to get high. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's what Spice was when we was talking about Spice. Right. Spice was uh, supposed to be a synthetic marijuana that was cheaper, that was cheaper than actual marijuana, but gave you the same effects of THC. Right. And I just think that all these people old in and all, all this doing this syrup and all that type of stuff. It's just a they're trying to find out a cheaper way to get, high. to get high, and then they're overdose. So like, I was listening to Mike Rashid, mm -hmm. right? Mike Rashid, um, he's the one that has uh, he he boxes now. He's the one that has the uh, gym uh, in Florida, mm -hmm. uh, the model after CT Iron Addicts, mm -hmm. um, and basically I was listening to him talk. The other day, he was talking with Gary V, and him. Okay. And and basically, he was saying that he got his own supplement company now, right? But he was saying when he first started out, he uh, made a pre-workout and he tried <laughs> it on himself, mm -hmm. and he said that fucking like he overdosed basically. And he almost died. He was up in the hospital. And what ended up happening was is he used the wrong measurements for, for caffeine. And the amount of caffeine uh, that he took was like 250 cups of coffee or some shit like that. Mm. You know what I mean? But he... Tweaking. You know what I mean? But he had the he had the right formula, but he used the wrong tool for his measurement. Right. You know what I mean? And he overmeasured. But he almost died. But that was a learning thing for him you know what I mean right. so it's like he was making a pre-workout or whatever it was he was making cheap you know what I mean right. and he could have died from it but it worked out yeah. and, I, and I think with with that I think all that synthetic stuff is just a cheap way for people to get high right I mean I'm too afraid to mess with any of it personally because I feel like I'm that one person that as soon as they try I'm um, that one statistic statistic that dies right yeah so i feel like that about cocaine like i always want to try cocaine like i see it and all that stuff but i think that that's like the one drug that if i do like automatically death yeah or you just gonna get super hooked and not gonna be able to get off of it i'm good no i don't need any problems and yeah that was all my topics all right, so we watched the uh, Jets Redskins, right? Yeah. All right. Redskins. So Sam Darnold was a four eleven. Then Teddy Bridgewater, you know, two years ago he fucked his leg up, right? So the whole controversy now is who's going to be the starter. And based off of the preseason, we're I would say Teddy Bridgewater, but everyone is saying the new rookie. You know what I mean? Because he's like all the hype. But anyway, um, Redskins, Alex yeah. Smith, four for six, 48 yards. Kevin Hogan, the white boy, you remember? Uh, he scrambled. Yeah. And uh, uh, Kevin Hogan uh, has Negro speed. Because <laughs> the reason why I say he has Negro speed is because he <laughs> took off full speed, uh, quarterback scramble, and he shook two defenders. And he kind of looked like Vic-esque out there. Um, Tom Brady. Oh, here we go. Eagles and Pats. So, you know the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Right. You know, Nick Foles won it last year because Carson Wentz hurt his knee. Right. It's the preseason, week two. Carson Wentz has not been cleared because of his knee injury. Okay. Right? And Nick Foles, he suffered a sprained shoulder last night. Right. So now they're down to their third string quarterback. Okay. So what do you think about the Eagles? Should Is Carson Wentz? I fuck if I know. So Carson Wentz, he's not cleared to, to play yet because of his injury. But do you think he should start week one, even though the doctor said he's not ready to play? He's not ready. He's not ready. Why personally put yourself through that? 
and further damage yourself and end your career if you could just wait it out. There you go. Good answer. Um, Tom Brady, is 41, oldest active quarterback. Max Kellerman from First Take, he says that he was supposed to, Tom Brady was supposed to hit a clip when he turned 40 last year. Right. So now he's 41. It's the new year. And he says he said that uh, the whole time the cliff was uh, this coming week one, mm -hmm. the first game. Okay. But did he get injured? Who's Tom Brady? Yeah. No. It's funny that you asked that. So Tom Brady, right? He was 5 for 5, 1 TD. He threw 26 passes, completed 19 of them, 172, 2 TDs. And this is a preseason game, right? Right. So his right tackle uh, that just got drafted, a first rounder, when he mm -hmm. fucked his leg up, okay. right? And then they lost, last year they lost their tackle, Nate Solder, to free agency. But who's going to protect him? That's the, the question now. The next guy? They don't have any next guys. <laughs> they just lost two tackles in one year. Like that's very rare in the, in the NFL. So now it's like they were talking about sacks. So I looked the sacks up. In 2016, he was sacked 13 times. Mm -hmm. In 2000, about yep. In 2017, he was sacked 35 times. Mm -hmm. So last year he got sacked 20 more times than the year prior. And then this year he lost two linemen. <laughs> Okay. And he's 41. So, so do you? So do you? Think you it's gonna affect his career. Is what you're asking? Yeah, I'm asking you. Like so, he played last night, and it looked like he fucking played the Super Bowl last Sunday and played preseason last night. Right. It looked like fucking. I mean, I think if if you are just that talented, then your talent is gonna surpass everything else that's happening. Right, like you're LeBron. Talented. Yeah, you're talented. In spite of you losing father time and all this other type of shit, your age and if you're talented, you're talented. If his talent ain't run out yet, it just ain't oh, run out yet. like how Lou Duvall said he just got his first record deal at 41 right. after the song. Mm -hmm. He said he's not trying to inspire people to get record deals at 41 right. because if the label dropped them, they're not going to be okay. But the label could drop Lou Duvall and he'd still be okay. Right. So he said he don't want to inspire people to do stuff like that because if it fails. Right. It's kind of like you don't want to be held. I don't know. I guess. Um, but yeah, continue. Talent is talent. So do you think Tom Brady is one of those? I, I mean, yeah. Let's see what. Where he goes from here. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. So. The other day, I did a podcast about. Uh, the Maryland football player Jordan Knight did die. Okay. Right, you didn't, didn't hear about it. Mm -hmm. All right, so a couple, in the beginning of the summer, uh, football player Maryland died. Uh, basically, he was at football practice. And he just he had a heart problem or something. <coughs> they say he passed out because of um, <clears throat> heat exhaustion, okay. and that's what he the symptoms he died from. So basically, uh. He was out there training, or whatever the case may be, and you know there are symptoms of, he was right, right, and none of the athletic directors or trainers did anything. Later on, along with Ho, he passed out and died. Right. So, I was talking about Ben Roethlisberger mm -hmm. because Ben Roethlisberger got popped a couple of days ago in practice. He got hit, and then his head hit the ground, and he showed symptoms of having a concussion. Mm -hmm. Right. So he automatically went into the concussion protocol because he had the symptoms, right? So today they came out after their test for Ben Roethlisberger and found out that he did not have a concussion. He just got his fucking bells wrong, right? So what they did to Ben Roethlisberger is the correct thing to do from all the training and the places and Olympic academies and all that type of stuff. That is right. Put him in it. And then if he's not in it, we can just take the tag, take the tag off, him, right? But that's what they should have did for the Maryland football player, because you would have saw that he would have been putting maximum effort. Um, 
people would have just been throwing him around. He would have been three steps slower. He would have been blurred. You know, all the stuff that we know. You know he could face up to 20 years. Okay. Close the door. So he could face, he could face up to 20 years. And he's negotiating a plea deal. So December 12th is set for a sentencing. What do you think about the whole thing? Now here's the thing before you start. DJ Envy, they talked about on Breakfast Club. D DJ Envy was like, and I'll play it for you. Um, basically, he was like, it's something that happens a lot in hip hop. Like, because Cat Williams, it happened to him and a few other people that he rattled off. And at first, I was like, like, how stupid could you be to do something like that? And then after DJ Envy like, explained it, I could understand, but in my mind, it's like, well, how, how still could you? Basically, he was saying that, that a lot of rappers, what happened is like, because they travel so much and they go to studios and so on and so forth, like, and basically, like, for whatever reason, like their past life or drugs or whatever the case may be, they have a gun on them or whatever, because people know they're famous and like the Tupac, he got shot outside the studio, all that type of He was saying that that stuff still happens a lot in hip hop. So a lot of rappers, they carry weapons because of that, right? So basically, he was saying like it happened to Cat Williams, this, that, and third, because they travel so much and they go to studios and they gotta get on planes, this, that, and third. Sometimes they forget, you know what I mean, that the gun was in the bag or one of their bags. So when they get there, that's when they get hemmed up. But and, my thing is, okay. Hold, hold on, let me finish. Mm -hmm. I understand it, but I don't agree due to the fact of the military training that we have. Like, I don't understand how can you, like, I never had a negligent discharge. Um, I never had, I've seen people have negligent discharges and all that type of shit. And I never had one. Not saying that I'm perfect, or well, in this sense, in the military, yes, I was perfect. But, you know what I mean? How, have you ever had a negligent discharge? Like, how can you, I don't get it. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I think because I've been through so much, like, fire training and all that stuff but still how can you it's a weapon i mean if you always like if, but what do you I mean, think what, before you give your what do you think about the whole well that's what i'm getting at okay. my thing is if you had it with you i think where he fucked up is you you ran so it was like you look like he was trying to sneak the shit in. right but i mean he has prior felonies right so right. he wasn't supposed to have it on him anyway so Period. my thing is either way you was going to get locked up right you was going to be in this situation so why run in the first place take that l or take the l but let him know like yo i i forgot i forgot i know i'm supposed to have not supposed to have in the first place but i forgot either way you, you fuck right in, in a sense but then for him i was going to say like you can take a weapon on a plane, but it has to be certain protocol that it goes through. It has to be in a lockbox. Right. Ammunition can't be with it, blah, blah, blah. But think about how those... Some niggas just don't think to look shit up. Right. But even so, he couldn't have done it anyways. Right. Because He's a felon. Right. He would have somebody else so, had to do it. I mean, there was a way it possibly could have been handled if somebody was with him who was legit. But that's the purpose of a private jet. He ain't got private or no, or no people with a private jet. When was the last time we heard a hit from Joel? Yeah, I mean I understand that, but you have to under you've been rapping for twenty years. You have seen a lot of people die. You have seen a lot of people get shot. Um, I could chuck it up as soon as he fucked up. I mean, yeah. I'm just going to take this keep it moving, see what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean he's grown, we all grown. <laughs> And what do you think of the new Janet Jackson uh, da Daddy Yankee video? I mean, considering we was just in here dancing to it with the kids, it's, it's catchy. It wasn't a, a duo that I had expected to see, but seeing now is that Spanish music is becoming more mainstream and it's kind of crossed over into American culture, so to speak. I mean, it's good to see the collaboration. I just hadn't anticipated it. But it's a catchy song. And I mean, it's Janet Jackson. How can you not like anything Janet Jackson is on? Very true. So. But it has that old, old vibe. 
I mean, anytime you listen to Dana, nine times out of ten, they put you in a mental state of the last time you heard the Dana song. Right. right. Dana just has that nostalgia type feeling that she gives you. So. How old is Daddy Yankee? Probably his thirties. He, I had a soldier. Uh, that fucking always try to get a mustache like this, mm-hmm. like not like this, but you know the thin mustache. And him being from Puerto Rico, his hair was, you know how some white people hair is just they just like they can cut it short, but it's just spiky, right. like a fro. That's how like his hair was. So when he tried to line his mustache up, it would look like a porcupine because it was so thick. Like he'd never get it right. I'm gonna see if uh.